Welcome to the Bryant University Information Session. Thank you so much for your interest in learning more about us. My hope is that I can give you uh, an overview about academic life at Bryant, student involvement, and steps in the college search and application process. If you feel like you need more information after this presentation, please feel free to check out our website or email your admission counselor to learn more. Our hope is that we can be a resource to you throughout your search and that hopefully one day you'll call yourself a Bryant Bulldog. We like to start by introducing ourselves uh, as an institution by sharing our values and guiding mission statement. So this is at the heart of everything we do at Bryant. We would like to provide students with an exciting and inspiring environment where they can really explore their interests. This means that we're interested in developing the whole person, so allowing students to really explore within the classroom academically and outside of the classroom extracurricularly. Once a student finds something that excites them, we really encourage them to pursue it and dive in head first. Our goal is to have students become really involved in that thing, either field, topic, or service that they're providing, and really look to the future and say, where is this going and how can I improve and help in this process? We want students to become a leader in that area, but we don't just want them to be leaders, we want them to lead with character and integrity. So that's a really part of our curriculum that's established in our first year student courses and continues throughout your Bryant education. So now that I've told you a little bit about what guides us here at Bryant, I wanna talk a little bit about who we are. So we're a medium-sized private undergraduate focused institution. We have around 3,500 undergraduate students coming from 38 states and 49 countries. Our current student body is about 18% self-identified students of color, 22% first-generation students, meaning they're the first in their family to attend college, and 8% international students. So that diversity in student body really allows our classroom to reflect the real world our students will join after graduation. The diversity in perspectives and experiences really enrich the classroom in a way that benefits all our students. Class discussions, you will learn and hear from different perspectives, and we really hope that students learn to enjoy being challenged to think outside of their world view. We really think that that betters all of our students. Because of the geographic diversity of our students, chances are you'll have a friend from 10 minutes down the road from campus and a friend that grew up a plane ride away. The similarity with all of our students is that they treat Bryant like home. Where is Bryant University? We are located in Smithfield, Rhode Island. That's about 15 minutes northwest of downtown Providence, the capital city of Rhode Island, and the third largest city in New England. Providence is a college town with a whole lot to do. We are, fun fact, one of the cities in the U.S. with the most restaurants per capita. So our students really enjoy um, going into Providence and enjoying the food scene and everything else the city has to offer. You can see from the map, we're also right in between Boston and New York City. This allows for opportunities to, for students to enjoy professional sporting events, concerts, networking opportunities, and internships. For example, a popular event, our student programming board will buy a block of tickets for Red Sox games and provide transportation to and from for our students to get into Boston and enjoy the city. We also have lots of networking trips and opportunities to New York City and Boston. Um, a great example is our fashion forum that goes to New York City every year and meets with fashion executives. This year they met with the CEO of Kohl's and learned more about uh, buying and merchandising in retail. Having two major cities right within striking distance really opens up a lot of opportunities for our students. If you kind of look more broadly in New England, you'll see that we're in a really amazing region with lots within our reach. If you're someone who loves the beach, we're 30 minutes from some good beaches and a few hours from some of the nicest beaches in the US. If you're someone who prefers skiing, snowboarding, or hiking, we are within a couple of hours of beautiful mountains in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Our outdoor adventure club and ski and snowboard club really allows our students to get out there with other Bryant students, building relationships and enjoying uh, everything that's in our backyard. Shifting focus to academics at Bryant, we have a really unique approach. We have something called our integrated curriculum. So we have a College of Business and a College of Arts and Sciences. 
What's unique is every student studies in both of our colleges, meaning that you will graduate with at least a major in one college and a minor in the opposite college. This combination allows students to really uh, obtain concrete skill sets and knowledge while also developing critical thinking skills, adaptability, flexibility, and creativity. There is an art, science, and a business component to anything you will do after graduation. So having students be really well-rounded makes them in high demand. Uh, we hear all the time that students got an internship, a job, into a graduate program because they have a really unique and well-rounded uh, academic background. So we're really proud of that. This also allows students the flexibility to explore their interests. It really opens up the curriculum. So they don't feel like they're just tied down to one narrow subject that they're majoring in, but they really have lots of opportunities to personalize their academic experience. For example, um, one of my favorites, we have an environmental science graduate who went into research. Um, and while they were on campus and involved in science research as an undergraduate, they started thinking about how can my minor in the College of Business really help elevate me. And so they ended up minoring in team and project management. And now they run a research team because they have not only those really strong science skills, but they also have the ability to motivate and manage a team, um, keep a project on task and um, within budget. So all of those things really um, enhanced their major in environmental science. The opposite is true too. We have a lot of students that are really excited about marketing. And when you learn about marketing from the business perspective, you learn a lot of really important skills. But understanding com consumer decision making and what influences people from the psychology perspective can really, really help you hone all of your marketing techniques. So we see a lot of students that will major in marketing within our College of Business and minor in psychology within our College of Arts and Sciences. Those are just a couple of examples. Uh, this combination really works for our students, sets them apart and sets them up for success. So when thinking about the classroom experience at Bryant, it is intimate and interactive. So we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 26 students. So all of our classes are taught by professors. We have no teaching assistants or graduate assistants. And really what that means is you're learning from an expert in their field. The small classes allow the professors to really get to know you, learn your name, your goals, your strengths, and your weaknesses. Classes are capped at 35 because we really want professors and students to be able to have discussions, work in groups, and really learn experientially. Um, we really feel like this is important at the collegiate level for students to really be interacting in class and not just being talked at. So that's really important to us. Uh, if you're sitting here thinking, this is all wonderful, but I'm not sure what I wanna study. I can't even start thinking about class size yet. Um, you are not alone. Uh, we have lots of students that come in to Bryant every year undecided. Um, they have some interest, but they're not really ready to commit to something just yet. And for those students, we have the My Path program. So that is a specific advisory program that specializes in undecided students. So you work with a specific academic advisor. Um, they work through your interests, kind of topics you're interested in exploring further. They'll help you pick a sampling of classes that interest you and then check back in with you to see, okay, what class surprised you? What class are you excited about taking another one in? You know, what's off the list for you? And you can kind of work through all of your options that way. You're still working towards graduation. So mom and dad, they're not adding any additional time on the back end of things. Um, you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. Um, that being said, because of that support that students receive, about 90% of students declare their major within the first year. Thinking more about the classroom experience, we have two uh, buildings on campus where students take classes. The Academic Innovation Center is our newest building on campus. Uh, that is a uh, building shared with our College of Business and our College of Arts and Sciences. There are all types of classes in this building. This building is really integrated with technology and has a lot of breakout space and private study space. 
for that group work to really take place. We also have a beautiful rotunda in the middle of the AIC that is great for events, competitions, speaking engagements, um, and really any academic event that needs to take place on campus. We also have the UNA structure, which is another main building on campus, and that also has a lot of academic um, spaces and also houses all of our laboratories on campus. Technology is a really big piece of the classroom experience, so all of our students uh, receive laptops when they come to campus. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So something that I hear a lot is students want to know what their first year looks like academically. What amount of control do they have over their schedule and what will they be taking? So we have something called the first year gateway courses at Bryant. We have five courses that every single first year student takes across their first year. Global Foundations of Character and Leadership is our first gateway course, and that acts as our introduction to the College of Arts and Sciences. So students look at those important traits. If you think back to our mission statement, character and leadership is really important to us. So they look at those things through a humanities lens that interests them. So you can look at character and leadership through Shakespearean plays. You could look at it through a healthcare equity course or a history of genocide course. Our Global Foundations of Organizations and Businesses is our introduction to the College of Business. This is a class where students are put into a small group and they actually create a business from start to finish. And through that process, they learn and experience every facet that goes into a business, from entrepreneurship to marketing to finance. So they really cover it all. We also offer a writing course that really focuses on bringing our students up to speed on what is expected of their writing on the college level, make sure everybody is set up for success for when they have to write in other courses. And then we also have a literature course that really focuses on critical analysis of literature and how students take in and uh, analyze the information and really understand um, their bias, the motivation of the writer, and really are able to think critically about all of those things. So those four courses are a semester long. So students traditionally take two in the fall and two in the spring. So when you come to orientation, uh, you will already have two of those classes assigned and then you'll cover the other two in your spring semester. And the fifth class is our idea program, something that is truly unique to Bryant. Our idea program, which is completed with just completed its eighth year, is a three day intensive design thinking program. All first year students are to move back early before the start of their spring semester to participate in this program. Before break, they selected a real world pr problem that is of interest to them. And this can range from the Patriot fan experience to making dog parks more friendly to the dog owners to hotel recycling initiatives. From here, they're split up into groups of five. Each group will actually have a faculty, staff, and a student mentor helping out. And on day one, they're presented with their real world problem. They head to the location to observe, so this could be, for example, Gillette Stadium, the Providence Place Mall, um, and they interview and they find out any problems that they can see or what they're, from what they're observing. When they come back to campus, within their cohorts, they're brainstorming and they're creating a solution as a prototype. And lastly, on day three, they're presenting their solution to alumni, local community members, faculty, staff, and judges at the trade show. Um, some companies even end up implementing the ideas given by students. Um, and it's truly an experience that all Bryant students absolutely love, and it's something that they take with them not only you know, once the program's over, but in their sophomore year, their junior year, senior year, and then once they're out in those internships and um, their job experiences after graduation. So here at Bryant, we have 22 Division I sports. Um, we are part of the Northeast Conference, and a perk to being a Bryant student is that all Bryant students get to attend these games for free. So we definitely encourage students to get out, show their school spirit, and attend some of the sporting events. Um, and as you know, we'll have sports all throughout the year. Um, if you're interested in playing any of um, sports at the D1 level, we always encourage our students to get in contact with coaches sooner rather than later. Um, you can fill out the recruit form online or you can contact the coaches. All of their information can be found uh, right on our website so you can go in and contact them and let them know that you're interested in possibly playing. Um, as for our club sports, if you're interested in playing sports at the college level, but you're thinking, okay, D1 sounds a little serious, not sure it's for me, um, club sports are another great opportunity for students to get involved. You're still going to put on your Bryant uniform, you're still going to play other universities, but you're just not going to play at that D1 level, um, and it also does have a different time commitment as well. 
And if you're sitting here listening and you're thinking, okay, I really enjoy playing sports, but club sports, D1 sports aren't my thing, maybe intramurals would be something to give a shot. Um, a lot of students love intramurals because it's an opportunity for you to play against other Bryant students. And those game times are at night. Um, and those can range from a full list of sports. So we'll have soccer, indoor soccer, um, They'll do basketball, so a lot of different opportunities for students to get involved um, and really meet other students on campus, which is really important um, to immerse yourself within the Bryant community. Um, and the best part, too, is our facilities are absolutely beautiful, which you'll be able to see also on our virtual tour. But we actually have one of the largest indoor athletic facilities in all of New England. And if you're sitting here, you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to be a D1 athlete. Am I still going to be able to use that facility? Absolutely. Some of our intramural games are also held um, within our indoor athletic facility as well. In addition, we also have a rec center for students to use and rent out equipment. So if you're coming to campus, you want to play a pickup game of basketball, you can go to the rec center and rent out basketball for you and your friends to use. We also offer different group classes for students. So we'll do different spin classes, yoga classes, bar classes. Also students can use our workout facilities as well, which is great and they're free. So no extra charge to students to use those. As for student involvement, we encourage all of our students to get involved, and this is certainly no problem at all for Bryant students. Participation in our different clubs builds confidence, interpersonal skills, and leadership. You might even want to join an academic club to get to know other students studying your major or give back to the community through a service organization or an event. We have plenty of different clubs and organizations to get involved in for students, over 110. Um, and if you're thinking, well, okay, a first-year student may not know exactly how to get involved on campus, we have a clubs and activities fair on campus where you're actually able to go up and down and learn about all of the different clubs that we offer on campus. You can learn about the different meetings that they have, what their mission is, um, different things that they, different events that they host. Just an opportunity for you to see um, if you could see yourself in that club and you can sign up for different clubs at any point during the year. For example, we have our marketing association and for example, they do a lot of freelance work and this is a great opportunity for students to get experience outside of the classroom. So just not within the classroom and what they're learning when they're with their professors. If you're involved currently in student government in high school, you may want to consider our student senate here at Bryant. If you enjoy singing, we have plenty of different acapella groups for students to join. And we do have Greek life on campus as well. So we have a small portion of students who are involved in Greek life. They are very active within the community and they're actually one of our most connected groups on campus. If you get to campus and you don't see a club that's for you, you can actually go ahead and start your own club. Um, one story that I like to highlight is we had a student who was really interested in playing spike ball. So he actually started a spike ball club on campus, which is actually one of our most popular clubs now here at Bryant you will find a club that absolutely is of interest to you. And again, if you do not, you are able to go ahead and start your own club here. Um, and most of our students too, they at first are like, okay, well, when they're applying to colleges, they look and they have a very long list of, you know, involvements that they had in high school. And when they come over to college, they're continuing that here at Bryant. So they're definitely finding where they belong. They're finding their people. At Bryant, about 50% of our students will go abroad um, during their time with, and they have a choice from about 270 different cities. What I think is very unique is we offer two different experiences for students to go abroad. So we have what's called our um, traditional study abroad experience, and then we have what we have is called the sophomore international experience. Um, your traditional study abroad experience, you're going to go abroad for the entire semester. So if you go during your fall semester or your spring semester, you won't be on here on campus. You'll be in the country of your choice. But if you're thinking, okay, I'm not really sure if I want to go abroad, but you like the idea of traveling, our sophomore international experience is a perfect opportunity for students to see other parts of the country. So we have what's called uh, your sophomore international experience. You leave your sophomore year and you're actually going abroad for two weeks. Both options are open for students and most students will definitely take advantage of them. If you're uncertain about studying abroad, the sophomore international experience gives you the opportunity to see different parts of the country and see if you could see yourself going abroad. If you're thinking, I definitely want to do both, you can absolutely do the sophomore international experience and the traditional study abroad experience. And we encourage that you go to two different areas. So this past January, we had students going to Argentina, Spain, and Germany. So the options are truly endless as to where you want to go um, abroad. We do have a study abroad office on campus that helps work with students. So you can let them know like, okay, I've studied Spanish for the past five years. It's also now my minor. Where can I go? What should I do? They'll help you work a plan so that way you're going to a place that you've always dreamt about going and a place that you'd be comfortable studying abroad. We do ask that if you're studying um, international business, that is the only major that we require to go abroad because we do feel as though that the only way to actually understand international business is to immerse yourself in different cultures and communities. Now we're going to talk to you a little bit about residential and commuter life at Bryan. At Bryant, we are a predominantly residential campus with 90% of our first year class living on campus and about 80% of our total student body living on campus. We have something called a progressive model of housing, which means that as you progress through your four years at Bryant, there'll be different styles, living styles available to you. 
As a first year student, you'll live in one of three first year halls. These halls include mostly doubles and some triples as well as suite style living. As a sophomore and junior, you'll likely live in one of our suite styles in the villages. And then as a senior, you can potentially live in one of our townhouse condos on campus, which is essentially a fully furnished apartment to teach you about what it's like to have an apartment off campus and prepare you for when you leave Bryan. As a first year student, you can select your own roommate or have residential life place you with a roommate. You'll complete a housing application that will allow you to list off some of your preferences and then residence life will be able to um, house you based off that. In regards to dining on campus, as a residential student, you will be required to have a meal plan, especially in your first year. You'll be automatically given a meal plan, but you can adjust that meal plan as you progress through your semesters, depending on your class schedule and how often you're using the dining hall. Outside of the dining hall, we also have several other food options on campus, including uh, in the Fisher Student Center. We have a Subway and Dunkin' Donuts, as well as Nick's Place, which is a grill. We also have Ronzio's Pizza in Newport House, which actually delivers pizza on campus. So you can get it delivered right to your room or actually anywhere on campus, including the academic buildings. If you're somebody who has dietary restrictions, there's no need to worry because our dining hall actually has a section called My Zone, which is able to accommodate all dietary restrictions. So you never have to worry about not being able to find something to eat on Bryant's campus. And Dining Services is happy to meet with students to go over these accommodations. Transportation is another thing we get a lot of questions about. Our uh, campus is a contained campus, but it is closely located to city life as well. And we have several different transportation options available to students. The RIPTA, which is the Rhode Island Public Transit Authority, actually stops on our campus right outside our Chase Wellness Center. And students can ride the RIPTA for free with their student ID. We also have a shuttle service that comes out of the Fisher Student Center that will bring you to local establishments from shopping malls to restaurants and actually frequents uh, a lot of the bus stations, train stations, as well as airports as we close, get closer to breaks. We also have a partnership with Zipcar. So there are three Zipcars on campus that students are allowed to utilize. They can rent those periodically to be able to utilize and travel off campus. First year students, unfortunately, are not allowed to have cars on campus, but as a sophomore, junior, and senior, you can certainly bring your car to campus. Of course, we want you to be successful while you're here at Bryant, but we're also committed to making sure that you're successful when you leave our campus. Because of this, we make sure that our first year students start accessing our Amica Center for Career Education as soon as they get to campus. Amica is able to give workshops that help you build your resume as well as write cover letters. They do mock interviews. And we also have something called the Resume Rally where students can bring their resumes around to several different companies and get feedback on their resume. About 87% of our students complete at least one internship, but actually several of our students have found that doing two or more has been helpful with helping them uh, pick their career path. A lot of the internships that we have are paid, and if they aren't paid, we do have stipend programs that students can apply for. Students are able to get these internships and job opportunities through our recruitment events. We have an internship and career fair every semester where several employers come to campus to recruit our students for internships and or job opportunities. You can get an internship for credit starting in your junior year, which is why most of our juniors will do a full summertime internship. Uh, these can be locally as well as across the globe, so students really can experience and make it what they'd like it to. A lot of our students, after they come back from their summer and their junior year, actually already have job offers, which allows them to go into their senior year and really tailor their experiences to prepare them for life after Bryant. We actually have a lot of companies that have strong partnerships with Bryant, and they'll come to our campus to do interviews for our students. As we mentioned earlier, we also take students to different cities around us to meet with executives and companies to get a better idea of what it's like to work there. So there's never a shortage of opportunities for students to network with companies. And we have an active alumni network of about 40,000 alumni, and they are also very active in the recruiting and networking process for our students. The 99% success rate with getting students a job or in graduate school within six months of graduation is something that's very uh, important to Bryant and something that we're very proud of. Uh, we always like to mention, because statistics can be skewed, that each year we send out a survey to our graduating students and we have a 91% return rate on this survey. So there's a small margin of error and we're really getting authentic uh, data on what our students are doing when they leave Bryant. The average starting salary for our students is around $60,000. And as I mentioned earlier, our students are going all over the globe for these job opportunities. We recognize that not all students wanna go right into the job force and some may wanna pursue graduate degrees. We do have several graduate programs here at Bryant. We have a master's of public accounting, a master's of business, a communications program, as well as a physician's assistant program. But we also recognize that we might not have all graduate programs that students are looking for. So we work to make sure that we're bringing them to graduate school fairs to be able to help them find their next step. 
These are just a few examples of the many companies that our students have had internship or job opportunities at. I'm sure there are some logos that stick out to you more than others, but what this showcases is several different opportunities for our students. It can be a nonprofit, large corporations, or small startups. We're really big again on our students developing their passions and finding jobs that will allow them to apply the things they've learned at Bryant. So now that we've covered academic and student life at Bryant, we'd like to talk to you about how to apply. Um, we are on the common application, so you can apply there, and we only require the one personal essay, so you can choose one of the prompts there and include that. Uh, we only require also one letter of recommendation from a school or guidance counselor, but we also recognize that you may have other people in your life that you'd like to have letters of recommendation for you. We often encourage students to find parts of their identity that are really important to them and then have people speak to those. So for example, if you're an athlete, having a coach write a letter of recommendation may be a good suggestion. If you're somebody who works a part-time job, having your supervisor speak about your work abilities. Uh, but we normally say between three to four is probably good, uh, making sure that the letters of recommendation focus on different things, but we only require the one. We also will be looking at your transcripts. So when we're looking at transcripts, we're not only looking at grades, we're looking at progression. So how are you challenging yourselves? What are the rigors of courses that your school allows you to take? And have you taken on any of those challenges and progressed through new curriculums? We are a school that does require senior grades. So no matter when you apply in the process, we will be looking to make sure that you're really applying yourself in your senior year. When we're looking at your transcript as well, um, and then if you decide to come to Bryant, we are a school that does accept AP and dual enrollment credits. So if you're a student taking any APs and you score a three or higher on the AP exam, those credits will transfer to Bryant. If you're taking any dual enrollment courses and get a C or better, those will also transfer to Bryant. So it is possible for students to start Bryant and with some credit already. Our average GPA for our applicants is about a 3.4 out of 4.0. For our SAT and ACT, our average uh, SAT is about a 1220 and our ACT is a 26, but we are a test optional school. Uh, every school has a different policy for test optional, so when you're looking and visiting schools, I encourage you to ask them what their test optional policy is. But for Bryant, what this means is that instead of including your test scores, you can choose to not submit them and instead do some short answer questions for us that essentially get at the reasoning behind why you don't want to submit your test scores and allow us to get to know you a little bit better. Applying test optional does not have a negative impact on students. Uh, we also understand that some students may be really strong in the classroom and not be good test takers, or they might just not want to have their test scores be a part of their review, and that's why we allow this option. Everybody who applies to Bryant is eligible for Merit Scholarship, and we will automatically review you for that. Uh, you don't have to submit anything additional for that. Um, we also are a school that will look at um, financial aid if you've completed a FAFSA. So if you want to have your family and you walk through that and complete the FAFSA, financial aid will be able to build you a package on top of the Merit Scholarship. We try really hard to provide financial aid packages with our decisions, so as long as everything is in that we need, we're able to do that so that you can use that when making your decisions. Another thing that isn't a requirement of being an applicant, but something that is optional and suggested for many students is our optional interview. Um, you can actually do interviews on campus or off campus as many of the counselors host interview nights while we're traveling in the fall. The interview again is optional, but it is a great time for you to be able to give context and the things in your application. So I usually suggest these for students who, if you had a challenging year and that impacted your grades and you'd like to kind of give me some insights into that, uh, or if there's something that you're really proud of and you wanna celebrate, if there are times and questions that you have about Bryant that you'd like to talk one-on-one -on -one with a counselor about, the interview is a great opportunity for that. Any of the notes that we take during our interview will also be a part of your application. So again, when we're going through and reading this, we'll have that context. There are several different deadlines for application at Bryant. We here have early decision one and two. Early decision is a binding decision. So if you were to get into Bryant, that would mean that you would come here. Usually we suggest early action as this allows you a little bit more time to make your decision. The application deadline for early action is November 15th, and you usually find out about mid-January your decision. February 1st is our regular decision deadline, and again, this is just as good. We don't give all the scholarship to everyone who applies early. The acceptance rate is 71% for early action and regular decision, but it just gives you a little bit less time for you to make your decision. So this is for students who maybe they want to uh, take the SATs a few more times because we do super score at Bryant, which means that we take the highest scores in the different components. Or if you're still just making sure that your essay is how, where you want it to be, if you want to improve any of your grades, anything like that, you can certainly apply regular decision. You would get your decision back mid-March, and then you'd have until May 1st to make your decision. I always say to students, you should choose to apply when you feel you can give us the best application that represents you the best. So to conclude our presentation, since this may be the first time you've learned a little bit more about Bryant, 
We always encourage you to look into more visit opportunities. We do have several of those listed on our website. Again, back to the optional interview, that's a great time for you to ask questions about Bryant, just as we ask questions of you. And we all, as counselors, all travel to different parts of the world. So we encourage you to come and meet us and introduce yourself, whether that be at a high school visit or a college fair. Another great way to stay connected with us is to follow our social media outlets. Um, here you can see those listed, and this is where we have students do takeovers to show you a day in the life of a Bryant student. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see Tupper. Um, he is our mascot. We are the Bryant Bulldogs, and he's a real puppy that does live on our campus. Um, he was named after Earl Tupper, the inventor of Tupperware, who gave us our land. Uh, so we just like to throw in that fun fact. And he also has a very robust social media presence, so we do encourage you to follow him. If you have any questions following this presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out to admission at bryant.edu.